I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for December 2015. Check out my new blog on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. I'll be blogging about astrological things and other things, so check it out, new stuff all the time. What do we have going on in the month of December, this last month of the year? We've got things specific to Libra. We have general transits to be aware of. First, let's talk about holiday shopping. This is a month where shopping is on a lot of people's minds and you'll have a pretty clear green light to go shopping until about December 20th. So if you can get your holiday shopping done by December 19th, you won't be wrangling with the Mercury retrograde shadow period that starts on December 20th. So last minute shoppers beware. You want to get your shopping out of the way. Some holiday seasons, we have Mercury retrograde the whole shopping season, but this year, it's pretty clear. You just have to mind that little part at the end there. We've got a festive mood with Sagittarius lighting up, sparkling, bringing fun and frolic, which blends beautifully with your air sign of Libra. You know, the fire and air energies really move together synergistically. So we have that going on for most of the month, and toward the end of the month, we have an a little bit, you know, it, it starts to gradually turn into this energy of Capricorn, which is more quiet, more reserved, more internal. We have the uh, movement of the sun into Capricorn on the 21st, which is the solstice, which is this quiet day. And um, it's a power day as well, but it's just a different mood than the beginning of the month. We've got a couple of really great, uh, or several really great dates, December 1st, December 8th. Whenever I give you dates, Remember that you can feel the energies before and after. It's not just on those dates. So just be aware of that. You know, keep it in your being that it doesn't have to be exactly on that date that you have a manifestation, um, either with something positive or a challenge. So on December 1st and December 8th, we have two beautiful aspects with Uranus, first with Mercury, then with the Sun. And Uranus is this planet of surprises. It's this planet of electric sizzling energy. And when it's in a positive aspect, it's just that. It sizzles with awesomeness, with creative genius. And since Uranus rules the 11th house of friendships and parties and fun and things like that, you know, there's a lot of similarities between air energies, Aquarius is one of them, and fire energies, you know, there's a very active nature to them. And this is a beautiful aspect. So it's something positive about congregating with people, positive communications, positive interactions with people, great times for parties. And since it's a trine, you don't have to do that much to activate it. It just is kind of given to you. On December 17th, there's an aspect with Venus and Pluto. And Venus rules love, relationships, romantic things. There's um, money, finances, there's aesthetics. And then Pluto is this powerful force of regeneration and trans transformation. And this is a sextile, this is a 60 degree angle. So when you have something like that, it's different than the trine. You've got to work a little bit. I call it an action required. It's like something comes in as an opportunity, but you have to do something about it. And if you don't, then you don't get the benefits of the transit. With a trine, you get the benefits of the transit without doing anything. So that's the difference between those. On December 11th, we have a new moon in Sag at 19 degrees. For you, this is going to either happen in the third or second house, which we'll get into more details about that later. But what to know now in the general transit is that the day before the new moon, there is a challenging aspect between Mars and Uranus. So this is a place where Uranus comes in with not as welcome jostling energy and not as happy surprises sometimes. And it can be, you know, very nerve wrangling. Some people might find that they have trouble sleeping around this transit or feel like they are really anxious or really nervous and they don't know what to do with it. I like to ground that energy into the earth. This is a scientific, the scientifically proven thing that you can ground your electric, your electromagnetic energy fields into the fields of the earth and it can help shift it for you. So if you can't get your bare feet in the earth, which is my first recommendation, then get your third eye, your forehead and your hands. When you have that electric, that power running through you and it's too much, Drain it into the energy field of the tree that goes down into the earth. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. And you might need it around those days, so remember that I said that. Another tricky time that we have is this full moon. Now, I believe that this full moon has more greatness to it than challenge, because there's more positive aspects than the negative one. But it's something to be aware of. So this is full moon in Cancer, and it's um, on December 25th, and Cancer 
full moon brings this fullness, brings this completion, brings this wholeness. And that's very fitting because this is a holiday time where people will be gathering for their different um, celebrations. And the family is gathering, the gathering in the homes. All of these are cancer related things. That can be what the fullness is, or it can bring drama. That's a possibility for a full moon as well. This particular full moon is opposing Pluto. Whenever there's an opposition to Pluto or a challenging aspect to Pluto, power struggles are more likely to be involved. It's the probability of power struggles being involved are increased. Now you might be saying that the probability of power struggles happening when you go home to see your family is increased already. Well, this isn't a coincidence, you know? So whatever that thing is, it always comes up. The odds of it coming up are pretty strong, but the odds of a creative, harmonious, positive resolution that can be better than ever are also increased because there is a trying to Neptune. So this transcendence, this harmonious solution finding. Also Mercury is trining Jupiter. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which rules this positive, creative solution energy. And so it also rules this creative genius, this Mercury is your expression and Jupiter is this expansion. So there's a really great chance for some amazing communication at this time that could result in positive outcomes. I like to recommend for situations like this, and for anything really, a book called Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. And he tells us how to word things in ways where it can be heard. This man is amazing. He gets people who are warring with each other, literally, in some cases, killing each other's families, extreme situations that many people aren't experiencing. And he gets these people in the same room and uses this method of communication to help each side get heard. When things escalate to that type of expression, people are not feeling like they're being heard. So if you word things in a way that's different, like he explains, you can make sure that you're heard and make it more likely that someone else, that you'll hear someone else as well. So check that out for this time. If you have something that might be pending, you know, you might want to do something different. So let's talk about some things specific to Libra. Oh, one more aspect at the end of the month, December 29th, beautiful aspect between the sun and Capricorn and Neptune. Again, this is a sextile, a 60 degree angle. So you've got to take action on this. And so Neptune might bring some intuition or a dream or a hunch that tells you to do something that could put you in the right place at the right time or in the contact with the right person at the right time if you take action on it. So you've got to follow through with that action required in order to get the benefit of the transit. Okay, so Libra, as I alluded to before, has this strong energy, at least you early in some of you middle degree placements, have this strong energy in the third house. For the rest of you, this energy is coming. It's not there yet, but pay attention still because this house will be activated for you soon if it's not already. So early in middle degree placements, the sun, the new moon, Mercury are all accentuating this house of Gemini, which rules transportation, communication, so devices, um, iPads, phones, you know, um, cars, vehicles, your mobility in general, interacting with people, social scenes. Gemini and Aquarius are our social energies. They rule this, you know, this active, busy energy of interacting with other people, and that's what the third house is, the house of Gemini. So there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of busyness going on, and there could be new lines of communication open and maybe that book will be part of it. You know, there's multiple layers here of this communication topic coming up this month for you. For the rest of you, middle degree placements and late degree placements, you have a strong concentration in your second house. Second house is the house of money, finances, material possessions, values, what you value, um, income streams, you know, tangible items that you have. So something new there, a new income stream, something, um, good news about money. Also the third house um, for you early and some middle degree placements is the house of your siblings and relatives that are not your parents or kids. So there could be some something new opening there with one of your relatives that could be cool. Um, so third and second house is accentuated there. All of you have strong focus on the 12th house. The early degree placements have Jupiter and North Node there as long-term transits. The middle degree placements have Jupiter and North Node there. And the late degree placement, oh, and some of you middle degree placements also have Mars there. And you later degree placements don't have the long-term ones there yet, but you have shorter term focus with Mars and Venus. So however it's coming through for your particular placement, the 12th house 
rules the deep recesses of your mind. It's your dreams that you have at night. It's meditative, meditative space. It's one of the houses of psychology. It's the house of hypnosis and um, meditation and communion with the divine. Um, you know, connecting with whoever you pray to in a quiet space. It's like the monk on the mountain type of energy. I call it the sabbatical space retreat, you know. So it's also one of the intuitive houses. The water houses, um, 4, 8, and 12th house are the water houses and these are called the intuition houses so developing that deeper sense that you know that sense of knowing that transcends the logic or what's on paper that area is being very strongly focused on for you and you might find that your dreams are um, supercharged you might be having more dreams more dream activity and you might want to start to work with those actively anything where you work with your subconscious mind through affirmation through subliminal messaging, through meditation, through hypnotherapy, through past life regression, through psychology or um, NLP, neuro linguistic programming, or EFT, anything that works on your mind, your deep, deep part of the unconscious mind. Only 10 to 20% of our mind is conscious, the rest of it's unconscious, and most of that's represented in this 12th house. You know, it's so deep and juicy. But there's a strong focus there, so you'll find that coming up. And that could be uncomfortable. You know, sometimes people feel uncomfortable when this happens because these are things that you're avoiding a lot of the times. These are the things getting swept under the rug or put in the attic. This represents the attic or the basement of your being, you know. And uh, sometimes it's hard to look at those things. I also call this the Harry Potter placement, you know, because fears are there. Things that real or imagined fears can dwell in that place, but also riches, great riches beyond imagination. So it's a deep process and you've got that going on right now. Some of you middle degree placements and you late degree placements will still have strong energy in the 11th house. It hasn't crossed over quite into the 12th house yet. And the 11th house rules these groups and organizations and teams and community, all these Uranus related things I talked about before, um, friends, social media, internet related things. So those things could be current for you this month as well. So I hope that you have a wonderful month. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com and check out my blog, check out my astrology blog and my blog on other topics. And I hope you have a wonderful month and a wonderful rest of your year. And I'll see you next year. Bye.